Well, here we are at location one. It's a public jetty. It's on the Broadlock. It'll be instantly recognisable to anyone that watches this video. I'm kind of limited for choices to where to go today because there's a, a pike match competition on. Let's not talk about the uh, pike in a bucket competitions because I'm trying to remain positive, remain calm, breathing in, breathing out, not wanting to scream fuck tired at the camera. Anyway, see you when we've got everything set up. Well, here we are. We are on a very, very public ar marina. Well, the marina is that away. This is the public launch. The lock is actually <laughs> really, 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 really high. I don't usually fish here. I'm not actually sure why I don't really fish here. I'd fish the back of the Bow Islands and places like that, but I've never actually, I don't think I've, in fact, no, I have never fished for pike off this jetty. So, we're on a brand new day of exploration. Let's see if we catch anything. The wind is even nice enough and being kind enough at the minute so I can get a drifter float out. I love fishing with a drifter float. As you can see, the water is uh, relatively calm. I don't know how much longer that's going to last, but... Ah well, we'll give it a go. Today I'm fishing with the big rods. I'm fishing with the D3, the 13 foot 4 pound test curve rods. With the big pit rails on. As you can see, there's quite a lot of opportunity to cast here but yeah I think I'm going to have a cup of coffee and some breakfast it's just broke dawn Still have chainsaw make chainsaw out chainsawing. Although I've noticed over the, the drifted bit there's a massive big slick of oil around it. So either the gut on the mackerel has burst or something's nudged it and poked it and fucked about with it a bit. The float hasn't moved. Just keeping an eye on it here. It's not actually that far out, you could probably cast a bit to it. But it's just amazing how it was flat calm, nothing, there wasn't even the wind. And then all of a sudden there's a big pool of, well it's the oil from the bit, you know it's the natural oil from the bit. Weird. Just about to have a cup of tea. Or a cup of coffee actually, lion tea, it's coffee. And I'm trying this stuff today, which is uh, the sticky bits salmon oil. I'll be honest with you, I'm not smelling a lot of salmon when I open it. It just smells like generic fish oil. But it was recommended to me by somebody to give it a try. And I didn't actually pay for this, they gave this to me, so. It'd be rude not to try it. Now, before anyone loses their mind, no, it's not sponsorship by anybody. Why do people ask that? Oh, you use Preston Fishing Tackle, you must be sponsored by Preston Innovations. No. <laughs> no. Just me. Paying for everything I have to buy, I have to fish with.
a little bit quiet. I was kind of hoping maybe something would have picked up the bait. Pike Lake structure. There's a massive marina behind me where boats are overwintered. So you'd kind of think that the pike would be, you know, fairly close to it, but so far nothing. So far not a peep. But we'll keep on going. Can't hurt. I'm going to enjoy my coffee. I'm going to have a cheap cigar and uh, see you in a minute. Still blanking. The wind, however, I think has changed. Whereas before the wind was going down the lock, well actually down towards the islands over there, it's now swerved and coming towards us. So I've just watched my drifter float get get out. I don't, know, I don't think it was out that far. Maybe 50 or 55 yards. And now it's just kind of come back towards the shore. There's a bit that's cordoned off here for bathers. Hold on. Uh, there's a trout jumping at the end of the pier. There must be some... Uh, Flies that can see. However, there's a bit that's just over there that's roped off for bathers, which is mental because the water temperature is is a rather chilly four degrees at the minute. Well, the outside temperature is four degrees, so I don't think anyone's going to go in there swimming. And all that anything uses those yellow boos for or buoys for, as the cormorants use them. So, we're kind of, might have to change the drifter float, might have to take it in. It's a shame I don't really get to fish with that rod that much. I do like drifter fishing. It's nice because you can set a depth, let the float go out, stop the line, so in effect you're making the bait linger at a distance, and then you know, I would usually let off a rod length or two rod lengths at a time. So it's moving, you know, 12 feet. And you can really, really inch a bit at distance. It's a really nice way of fishing. But it depends on the wind. And it depends on the, uh, the boaters. If there's a lot of boat traffic, then you're wasting your time. You really are. Speaking of boats, I'm kind of half tempted to get the bait put out. Hmm, decisions, decisions, eh? It'll be the first time I've had the boat out this year. I'll finish my coffee first and then go get it. That is a trout, because it's just jumped for the third time at the end of that jetty. I think they're doing it so they can go, ha ha ha! But... There's a lot of ducks. And they'll be safe in this end of the, the lock, there's not too many people that shoot them at this end of the lock. But just a little bit further that away, <laughs> and they'll be in danger of getting lead poisoned. Right, I have my deeper attached to the end of the battery, into the phone here, or into the bait boat. See what we can see, shall we? So far, it's shown that we're about 
three and a half meters. Right, let's see if you can get a good view of this. Deeper is disconnected. Why is deeper disconnected? What the fuck's wrong with it now? Technology is brilliant when it works, isn't it? Deeper is disconnected. I'm going to have to have a play around with this thing to see if I can get it working again. We just boat out that bit. Dropping a nice big chunk of lamprey at the minute. It's going to take some tinkering to get this thing working. I can tell. It's just going to take some uh, possibly slapping. Right, that should be the bait dropped. I'll turn this puppy around and come back to me with it. I'm going to have to uh, bastardize something that holds this here. Right, I'm going to set this rod up. Still a nice day though. I mean, you couldn't get bored of looking at that scenery, could you?
<laughs> you should. Magic. Yes, I run the bit boat through my own lines. Cock. As you can see, there's a bit of a technical difficulty with my deeper connecting to my phone. Once it goes out a bit of distance, I'm not sure whether, I don't think I'm meeting the maximum range of the deeper, but either way, more testing is needed. This is one of the finest little petrol stoves you can buy. To get it going, you unscrew the handle, pull out the press, or the pump, it is a pump, pump, press, pump, mm. and you give it some give it some love. 30 or so pumps charges it up a little bit. Then you take your lighter. And away you have it. Now I wouldn't recommend doing this inside a tent because it's liable to kind of go Oof. and you're going to end up kind of doing the dance of the flaming arseholes. So don't do it in your tent. Do it in a well ventilated area. I run my stove on uh, Aspen 4 which is clean petrol. I used to run it on petrol, but I was forever cleaning the filters. I bought this. I think I bought this when I was 18 years old. And this same one's still going. So we're going to make ourselves another cup of coffee. And uh, assess what is wrong with today. As you can... As you will have seen, I tried to put the deeper on the back of the bait boat. There's a few glitches. If anyone out there is a bit of a tech kid and not understands how to work this out so my phone will connect and hold connection, then let me know. Yes, I understand my bait boat is very, very old. It eats batteries to a marching band. But that shouldn't really affect the deeper. The deeper was only brand new at Christmas time. There's plenty of spe plenty of fish, you know, plenty of bait fish, prey fish. I'm just wondering where the pike are. It's a bit strange. Where I'm fishing is five and a half meters deep, so it's you know it's. it's it's deep enough, you know. It's, it's got roach and bream, well not roach, it'd be roach and perch probably. Nothing very big, but it shows that there's fish there. Weird one. Strange one. But it's good that I've got the, uh, the big rods out today. I haven't had the 13 foot rods out for a while. Normally I use those rods for just out and out uh, distance fishing. I'm not fishing mega distance here, I'm just casting. But it's uh, good to get them out and get them, make sure that everything's working order, everything's, everything's still good. I did have uh, snag leaders on them. I still do have snag leaders on them. 
One was a mono snag leader. Uh, I can't remember the name of the company. I think it was, you know, Fox or Corda or Corum or, you know, a snag leader is a snag leader. Basically, a snag leader is heavy monofilament. And it's designed to kind of avoid the, the zebra mussels. And I did have, well, I, I switched it across to two braided snag leaders. The Christon Quicksilver is the braided snag leader of choice today. It's a 45 pound snag leader and it is as bomb proof as a braid you'll ever get. The catfish guys use it for hook lengths and I've used, you know, Quicksilver for a couple of years now and it's, it's very, very good. It stands up to the abuse, you know, extremely well. I'm just a little bit surprised that there's been no pike show up yet. If today is a blank, I'm going out tomorrow. Fuck it. I can't be doing two sessions and having blanks in both sessions. People will just be taking the piss. Well, more, t more so than usual. It's a cracking day though. Beautiful day. As you can see, it is a rather special place, this place. It, is, it has scenery that you wouldn't uh, ever get bored of. I'm just waiting for the pike. Great news with the channel by the way, on the 11th of September to the 11th of October, you know, the channel grew over 200 subscribers, that's fucking awesome. We keep this sort of momentum up, we'll be well over the thousand for Christmas, and then there'll be on the bank live shenanigans. I do have some upcoming things for the channel. You know, besides bringing my little nephew out fishing, that's happening. Probably going to start happening next month. I'm also going to have a special guest on the channel. A man that has caught huge catfish in Spain, ran his own guiding business in Spain. He has caught pike that are, you know, if it Fish of a lifetime doesn't give it justice. The man has caught some monsters of pike. And there's a clue there as to what business he used to run. In fact, I don't know if he's still connected with it. But, I'm going to have a special guest coming down. Just have to work out the logistics of it. And get the, uh, everything sorted out for it. He's a good guy, I've fished with him before, and it's always uh, a pleasure to spend time in his company. So you have that to look forward to. And I'll pester him as well to bring down some photos of the big fish that he has over the years. You know, we're talking fish of a lifetime that you can't even believe, you know, massive things. But that's for your future. I'm going to have this coffee then. Uh, Reconsider life. Wildlife attracted to me. Go away, spiders. Also having a bit of a disaster with my uh, my bait oil injecting system. 
the little rubber bits at the end of the syringe perishes and you end up with a mess. So you recycle the needle and you just bend this the same as your normal rubbish. Again, I'm emphasizing the point, the needles, th th try not to fuck about with them guys. Don't get yourself stuck with them because it's just not fun. It's just going to end badly for you. But, syringes are cheap, your life isn't, so don't fuck about with them. That's your public health and safety announcement for today. <laughs> Something everybody enjoys doing is having a bit of a route through the old tackle box. I'm going to show you how to make a rotten bottom lead link. Now, for the anglers out there, this is going to be easy stuff. But for you novices, this is what we're doing. Stay still, camera, don't move. This is what I use for my old lead links. It's an old spool of mono. No, it's 15 pound. 15 pound mono is usually quite good. It's quite strong, but this I've had this for a long, long... I don't even know if they make this anymore. You want your mono to break because you're going to be attaching a lead to it. So you don't want you want to basically have it so that the lead will snap or the line will snap and you'll be left with your lead on the bottom and you'll be left bringing back your terminal gear so you won't lose any of your gear you'll just lose your lead uh, carp guys deliberately dump their leads you know that's just that's just the way the carp guys roll personally I don't see the need for it every single time, but I'm not a carp angler, so I'm not going to contradict the carp anglers. Most of my ledger fishing is done by a running ledger rig. There's two types of run rings that you can get out in the market. There are the little plastic ones, like so. And there are the man ones, like so. I use man ones. These are ceramic rings with a little metal collar. These are designed for catfishing. These are brilliant. They will never burn out. The problem with these little plastic ones is the line after casting tends to form a little groove and it weakens it and it burns it out. And eventually you have a cast and you have a snap because the run ring has failed. That's not something that you want. I tend to attach my run rings and my leads to little clips like that there. These little clips are dead easy. They're they're cheap. I mean, you can buy a pack of. I think I bought buy them in packs of twenty for like four pound. They're, they're 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 cheap. You don't need to be tying mega knots either. I mean, I just tie a simple overhand loop. So you end up with with that a little loop and your clip. Now you take away the tag end obviously, you don't leave the tag end on there. So that is your finished product. Well that's one end of it finished. To this you tie some simple knots. I usually tie three or four, that doesn't make a difference. When you tie a knot in the line, you're dividing the strength of the line in half. I think that's how it works. I think that's the the the, uh, the math for it. Either way, you're weakening the the line. So you're reducing the five the 15 pound mono down to a, a breaking strain where if you have to pull for a break, you'll pull for a break and it won't be a problem. So, 
there you go. I'm not even sure how you're going to see this, but there you go. There's four little knots, just normal knots, and your clip. Now, I tend to fish this link as long as my as, as a minimum. I want it as long as my tress. So my tresses tend to be, uh, you know, on average two foot, 24 inches. So I'm going to make this to be three foot, you know, so it's a bit longer than my tress. That way your lead is on the ground, it's not going anywhere, and it's nowhere near your bait. So you're not going to have your lead tangled around your bait. Uh, I like a good, I like a, death, a bit of length. Plus if you're fishing into stuff like the silt and dirt, the lead will sink into the mud and the crap, and your, your, your lead's not going to pull the bait down into the dirt unless you're fishing somewhere that's got crazy amount of salt. So, yep, about that, that's about right. You don't have to go out and buy this, this is just old mono that I had and instead of, I mean there's not enough there to fill up a spool, so instead of just binning it, this is what I use it for. You don't have to go out and buy, you know, specialist Terry used to stuff, you know. And by showing you this, I've now lost my second clip somewhere in my tackle box. <sighs> Moving on, shall we? I'll get another clip out. I have loads of clips in here somewhere. They're kind of buried at the bottom of other things. Come on. These little boxes from Fox. They've been out for a lifetime, but there's a ton of useful shit in there. I mean, bait flags, little rubber grommets, beads, run rings, more beads, swivels, tons of stuff. Always remember, slide it in, lock it. Because it sucks balls when you drop this in your bivvy and then you have to spend the rest of the time trying to fucking pick up all the stuff and get it all put into the back of the, the box again. So, top tip, <laughs> lock up your tackle box. <laughs> oh, all this for a lead link, eh? Anyway, back where we were, so, lead link, knots, clip, three foot of mono. I slide down a little silicone sleeve. You don't have to do this. It just makes everything look a little bit neater. Again, you don't have to do this, this is just what I do. So you'd have your two little sleeves. And then you attach the, the other clip. Ta -da! On the same way as you did the bottom clip. I'm getting technical advice from the crow on top of the, uh... Do you see it? Sitting on top of the lifesaver ring. Do you see him? Just sitting there. So I'm going, Ka! You've done it wrong, fat ass! You've put the lead link on backward, dipshit! Everybody's a critic, eh?
anyway. Back to making the lead link. So you have your man run ring. I'll put the link in these in the description. And you clip your run ring onto your little clip like so. Slide your rubber sleeve on like so. And then you on the other end you would attach your lead. So there you have your three foot long lead link and if it has to be pulled for a break because you put so many knots in the bottom it's easy peasy I'm just waiting for the pike to turn up I can't have two starts two blanks for the session that's just crap Anyway, tackle box, tons of stuff in it, tons of stuff. Poppers, beads, other equipment, hooks, trace wire, little rattles, we'll discuss them later. PVC stoppers, PVA stoppers, not PVC. Rig tubing, tungsten tubing, and shrink tubing all in this bit. Scissors, trace blades, uh, bait and needles, my little file to uh, sharpen up my hooks if I need to sharpen them up again. That's the coated Quicksilver, Preston Quicksilver. I've run out of the uncoated stuff. It's the uncoated stuff that I'm using as a shock leader today. And there you have it. I'll look into my tackle box. Rubber bands for the drifted float, silicone covers for the things, rig and wire, power gum, and it all fits nicely with a bit of a squeeze, like so. If you are a tackle company and you wish to, uh, Send me a new tackle box that's more durable than this. Feel free. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Ain't nobody sponsoring this shit. <laughs> well, it looks like today has been a, a bust. There's a... Thought it would have been better, but... Shit happens, eh? I'm going to have to go home and toss a coin to see if it's going out tomorrow because blanking just isn't my style. 